Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Chris Curtis up against Kelvin Gastelum at UFC 287. This should be very interesting. Kelvin Gastelum, still a very big name in this sport. Now, I feel like there's a narrative around Kelvin that he has lost a step in some way, but he his losses are Jared Cannonier, Robert Whitaker, you know, either title contenders or former champions. And um, you know, is that how do you see it? How do you see him as a challenge for you? Um, Kelvin's good, man. Like like you said, uh people kind of sorry, we just got off a play. Whew. People, uh, MMA fans especially, are really fickle. And uh, they'll definitely want to turn on you, you know, like, they'll tell you fast, you suck, whatever. But, I mean, he's lost to – there's really no shame in most of those losses. Like, he's been out there doing his thing. Uh, everybody kind of has times they struggle in their career. Uh, he hit a rough patch. It happens. We've all hit rough patches. But most of us do. And if we haven't, we probably will. Um. That being said, you know, he's only lost to some of the best guys in the division, but I think that I can fight those guys, and I think that I am going to be one of those guys. So I think that, you know, I want this more. I think that I take this far more seriously than most people. I put, uh, you know, that this is my life. I have nothing outside of this. <laughs> this is all I do. So... I think one of Kelvin's biggest challenges for me is you never know what Kelvin's going to show up. Are we going to have Izzy Kelvin show up or are we going to have like, you know, Kelvin, the Kelvin who says, you know, I got a problem eating a uh, carne asada too much close to a fight. Is that going to show up? So you never know which one's going to show up. So all I can do really is prepare for the, you know, I, I have to prepare for the best Kelvin. Uh, he moved back home. We started a new camp with Cejudo. So I have to assume that, you know, that's going to let a new fire under him. But uh, you just never know, man. He's such a wild card, which makes it kind of, kind of frustrating, but kind of entertaining. You know, you'll you'll see, we'll figure it out on fight night. What's the most likely ending to this fight? Uh, I don't know, man. Somebody wins, I guess. <laughs> one one of us wins, one of us loses. It's gonna be. A I don't know, out. man. It's I played up, I played over in my head a lot. Uh, he's a hard guy to finish. He's really hard to finish. He's really hard to knock out. Nobody's but, done it. Yeah, like I would, I would definitely love to be the first guy to stop, uh, to stop him from strikes. Uh, if I can knock him out, put him down, whatever. But it's it's such a it's one of those ones where I can't really put too much like I can't put too much into like how he's performed and like what's happened in the past because he's just such a crapshoot, man. Like I drove myself crazy for weeks trying to figure out what camp was gonna come, and my team is like, "Hey, man, let's just go fight because we don't know, you don't know." We probably don't think he knows what Kelvin's going to show up. So, you know, it's likely outcome. Who knows? Somebody's going to win. <laughs> going to be a draw now that you've said this. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, oh, God, watch. I've, like, cursed myself, probably. Um, how pleased are you with your body of work since you arrived in, this, in the UFC? I mean, it's pretty fantastic finishes. It's only the Hermanson fight, really. Uh, you know, how, which, which pleases you the most uh, since you arrived? Uh, I think it's getting it all done. I don't, nothing really sticks out as pleases me the most. It's just I'm kind of, I'm proud of what I've done. Uh, was I four and one? Uh, the one loss I had it was like just two short notes of a fight that I really shouldn't have taken. But I, you know, like you, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to? And uh, I'm just happy, man. Like I, scre- I, I screamed from the rooftops for a long time that I deserve to be here. That I'm good enough to be here. That I'm one of the best guys in the world. And a lot of people, you know, try to, you know, try to, you know, fade you. Like, oh, you can't do it, blah, blah, blah. But I'm proving I can do it. I'm proving that I can beat, you know, the guys you say were great, that I can beat. The guys you think are good, I can beat. And I'm, I'm just happy to be able to prove, you know, like, I deserve to be there. I'm at that level. And I think more so than anything, I think I'm happiest that I get to continue that journey of seeing how far I can go. Because, like, for me, it's the entire journey has just been about figuring out, like, you know, how far can I go? Where's my limit? Like, I want I want to find my limit. I want to see if I can push past it. And if I push past it and we look for a new limit, if not, then I'm happy knowing, like, okay, like, I pushed as hard as I can go. And, like, this is where I end up. So, for me, being able to continue that journey it means the world to me. We've seen how quickly things can go in this sport, right? I mean, Sean O'Malley went from, what, 13 to 1. You right now are 14, 15. You're uh... – 
14, 14. So, you know, uh, how intrigued are you to see the top two guys? And, and are you keeping an eye on that one? Because basically two finishes and you're right there, right in that mix. I won't even watch that fight. I, I won't even watch that fight. Like, I, I'm at a point now, I'm 30, I'm 35. I'm, a, I'm kind of an old man. And it's only 36 this year. I don't really care about. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to watch most of this card. I'm not going to watch other fights. I just don't care. I like to fight. I fight because it's what I love to do and for the challenge of it for myself and whatnot. The, the rest of it, like the UFC comes to me with fight. If I'm healthy and I can take it, I always say yes. I don't really, I don't really care. Like, so who cares what happens in this fight to me? Like, if I, if I benefit from it, cool. If not, cool too. I'm just going to say yes when they come to me with the fight. I'm going to go train for that. I'm going to go fight that. Then we're on the next one. Like, I don't need to like size people up and figure stuff out. Like that. None of that means anything. I'll just say yes when the contract comes and we go from there. Who wins, Izzy or Alex? <sighs> My brain says Alex. I'm not even an Izzy fan. I am, I am not an Izzy fan at all. But I kind of feel for the guy to where you just like, you have your own personal boogeyman who's followed you across two sports now. And who's just, if he, I saw the article the other day where Alex Barrow is like, I only came to MMA because Izzy said that I would be forgotten and nobody knows who I am. I went, holy shit, you accidentally created your own boogeyman. Like, that is some horrifically Shakespearean poetic, like, nonsense. So now I'm like, bro, he's got to win this because, like, I feel like this is life or death for Izzy. Like, I mean, everybody's going to fight his life or death. I'm like, no. For his Izzy sanity, he has to win this. Or he's he's going to lose it. Like, bro, this dude's going to follow me no matter where I go. So I'm going to go with Izzy because I feel like he has to kill his boogeyman. And he knows this is it. Like, there's no, there's nothing beyond this point. Like, you have to kill this man, this boogeyman, or he's going to haunt you forever. So my brain says Alex, but like in my heart, I'm maybe an Izzy fan, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm pulling for Izzy. That was brilliantly put, man. It made me more excited for the fight. Um, People always seem to love the fun and games at the gym with you and Sean Strickland. Um. I saw his latest tweet trying to show Edmund Shabazi in his, his cup. Uh, is he run around trying to show you his Johnson as well? This, this, we've had so many talks about this cup. It is just, he just doesn't understand social norm. But he, no, he understands. He doesn't care. He's just, he's just what happens when you don't hug your kids enough. And like, he's, uh, poor Edmund. Because Edmund's such a nice, Edmund's such a nice guy. And, like, Sean is just constantly on Edmund about something at all times. And Edmund's just, like, I'm not used to this. What do I do? But uh, it, it's, a, it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. And, uh, like, the stuff you guys see is, like, the very tip of the iceberg. Amazing. Uh, do, do you like the fact that he's going to 205? Is that a good thing for him? Uh, Dude, Sean walks around at, like, 225, 230 pounds sometimes. Like, he's a big, big dude. Honestly, I think he'd be better at 205 than 85 still because like, you know, he cuts a decent amount of weight to 85. And, like, just when you see him in the gym training, like, at a weight that's comfortable for him, it's a nightmare. I mean, I've seen him ragdoll heavyweights. Like, I've seen I've, I've seen him literally, like, go toe-to-toe with heavyweights, ragdoll heavyweights, beat up 205ers. So, like, you know, I think and he's only, what, 30 now? Like, he's still young. Like, and he's he's just now, like, the scary thing is, guys, like, at 30 as a male, like, athletic male, is around when you start, like, solidifying finally. Like, you reach your final form. Like, this is how big you're going to get. So I think uh, he's, like, as he gets to that 30, you know, he's realizing he's a big dude. I think he can have fun at 205. There's a lot of dudes I think he can get to 205 pretty easily. I've got a new quick fire for you uh, to wrap up with. Let's go. All right. Uh, best combat sports movie ever. Ooh. Mm. That's a, a for a quick fire. You just ruined me. Like, ooh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. I'm gonna go. No retreat. No surrender. What's your favorite drink? Uh, ginger beer. What's your favorite TV show? What's the best TV show right now? Right, I don't watch TV. I. Of current TV, I have no idea. I don't. I don't watch TV. Favorite TV show ever was Firefly. Silliest thing you've ever said to the opposite sex. 
without context, it doesn't mean much, but it's uh, a, a girl told me she loved me and I asked her if she wanted to get pizza. Savage, that's brutal. Um, who's the <laughs> nice? <laughs> I panicked, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just thinking of something that you love and you thought of pizza. Um, yeah, I panicked. I'm sorry. Who's the nicest person in MMA? Uh, Stephen Thompson. Hands down. He's just, just a saint. If you could be any comic book character, who would it be? The Sentry. Who's the most famous person on your phone? Uh, probably Chael Sonnen. What's the most important item in your fridge and why? Uh, wait, what do I even eat? Uh, probably my, like, I have a shelf of meals, meal prep meals, because I don't believe in cooking anymore. I've outgrown cooking, and now I just pay people to cook for me, which makes my life easy. That, and then the, uh, ooh! The Chipotle Tabasco sauce because that goes on everything. I'm gonna try that. Um, who's the best? Who would make the best wingman in the UFC? Wingman, Jamal. Uh, Jamal Hill. Hands down, Jamal Hill. <laughs> and who would make the best WWE star from the UFC? WWE star. Holy shit. Honestly, probably Kevin Holland. Like he's he's got the personality and a flair for it. I would say Kevin Holland. Are you intrigued by this merger? Does it mean anything to you? Uh no no. I woke up and like, oh, we're all by the same company now. I'm like, does my pack I text my manager, like, does my pay change? She's like, no. I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> like Apparently, I received no more money from this. I couldn't, I couldn't care less. I don't think merge is the right word. But yeah, well, that's it, right? Is um, it buyout? What, what, I don't even know the details of this. It's weird. <laughs> um, a lot of people seem excited about it. Uh, nice one, Chris. I appreciate it. Good luck. Always good to speak to you. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that. Have a good one.